that would be awesome. You're using champagne yeast and you're ending up with about the same concentration of alcohol you'd see in champagne. So is this where we would add like a mother? This is yeah. exactly mm -hmm. where we'd add yeah. like a mother. <laughs> yeah. Nailed it! <laughs> so the collaboration started off as just an idea to figure out how to, and if we were doing the right by our shrubs. So it was having farmers that were coming and bringing us product and making sure that we don't lose those in the future. And so we buy as much as we possibly can, but to do that, you have to be able to use it in different ways. Um, and forms of preservation are the, the oldest way that we know how to. And so just making sure that we're doing it chemically correct. I knew that Rice is a really special place and that they'd have a lot of hands-on learning or experiential opportunity, but I did not know that I would have that opportunity literally four weeks less or even less into my freshman year. What we were trying to do overall was we were looking at their vinegars and trying to see why they were different from the commercial vinegars. We looked at you know the alcohol, acidity, sugar, all those things. Through a variety of methods we eventually found out that their vinegars are extremely alcoholic, more than, than the average wine. <laughs> uh oh. <laughs> Not sure I have the license yeah. for that. <laughs> For me, the takeaway is that we're not, you know, to get to the point where we want to our shrubs to be that we're, we're producing these shrubs from our own vinegar. Right now, we're basically just making cocktails with our stuff. So it's it's having to to find out where the dilution rate is, so that we're not just making ethanol or alcohol out of it, but we're actually going through the entire process and finding a way to make a delicious vinegar that we can add to our shrubs. Once you've, once yeah, you've added the vinegar, you it drops like down. Yeah. So this is a case where we've actually had science meet real world, and where we've actually had scientific data convince somebody that the approach that they took initially wasn't complete and wasn't working. So I think it's been a great opportunity for students to, to work with Chef Chris and then his sous chefs um, to explain to them how chemistry works um, and how microbiology works. Because at the end of the day, they know food, but they don't understand always what the behind the scenes science is that make all of those favorable characteristics that they want to see. But for, for me, it's a, it's, a, it's a highlight in my career is, is to see um, something that we've looked at and just like, well, we can make it work. You know, and that's always the philosophy in the kitchen is like, well, we can make it work, but to actually see people that are taking the time and taking the steps and, and going through all of the data for it and coming up with conclusions and like, well, you can do make it so much better if you were to do this or, you know, we'll find out in time how this is going to work and having people do these, these really scientific things that I would have never, like, I just, it's out of sight of my realm, but it's going to make a product in the end that will when I give it back to a farmer that grew something for me and I show them what we've done with it, it brings them to tears because they know that we did that justice and that's what it's about.